Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Stocks Will Show Market Review. I usually like to look at the market on a weekend when everything's flat and closed and just kind of take a look at what I see for the expectations for the week. There's something screwy here with my chart, which I hope corrects itself on Monday morning because the 22nd did not close like this doji here. Let me just look at a 15 minute before I go over this. The 22nd. Yeah, there's something wrong with that daily chart. February 20, uh, January 22nd closed at 104.02. I, I have no idea why this looks like this here on a weekend. Hopefully it will fix itself by tomorrow morning. But I just want everybody to know this isn't really correct here. In fact, let me just see if I can make this a daily chart here. No, that's just not right. Something to do here. Maybe it's because it's in a weekend. That is weird. I knew that wasn't right. Okay. Wait, hold on. Let me just reset this here. Okay. So let's look at the market. I actually didn't trade Friday. I had to go out of town. I actually missed here that the market gapped up. And am I surprised? The answer is no. Market gapped up in the QQQs on Friday the 23rd. Uh, actually, well, ex this closed around, this, this was a neutral gap. Neutral, neutral gap here because, again, this chart is off. From where this is, looks here, if this was a real close, it gapped up. Actually, we closed around here. We still gapped up. We still gapped up. We actually opened neutral. Neutral here on the Friday and rallied and held. Held right in here. This is perfect. This is really, 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 really nice. Market looks like it's going to make a new high this, this week. Yeah, market's going to make a new high this week. So I did talk about all of this in here, this drop-off that happened in December, the drop-off that happened in the beginning of January, the second drop-off that happened in here. I kept telling everyone there's nothing wrong with this market. It's not doing anything wrong. The market's going to hold. Hasn't even broken the first support area. Nothing's wrong with this. And don't be surprised if we flip around very, very, very quickly. Why? This is exactly how institutional positioning comes in hard, fast, and quick. Why? Because money and power is strong in the market. And that is why... Uh, just pre just guessing, okay, that something is done over, like people are guessing that this market move, this bullish market move is done or over, and shorting it doesn't make any sense. You don't want to be on the side of the people that are in control. It's all about control. The market is about control, the control of the money. Who has the control? Who has the control here? The bears never had control here. And I know you're like, well, how do you know that, Melissa? The market's traded down five days in a row. All these days in here, it's made a series of lower highs and higher lows. But I'm telling you, there was nothing really breaking in this chart. There was nothing ultimately bearish in this chart. You have to look at more than that. What do you look at? You look at the gaps. You look at the gaps. I wouldn't be surprised if we gapped up tomorrow morning. Do we have to? No. Do I think we might? Yeah. We might. So either way, the market is setting up to make a new high this week. I would be surprised if the market didn't make a new high this week. What if it doesn't? Does that mean that it's not going to? No. No, no, it doesn't. Do I think it's likely that we come down and retest this area again? Actually, no, I don't think we will. So I think we just continue higher this week. If we do come down and retest that area again, does that mean we won't continue higher? The answer is no, okay? This market is strong. It's going to continue to be strong for the entire year of 2015. And it has a, you know, a lot of uh, work to do here that could happen very, very quickly, depending on exactly how aggressively the buying wants to come in. High was 106.25. Let me just see where the congestion is. We're through it. Actually, we don't have a lot of work to do. We are through the congestion. We're higher this week. <laughs> We're higher this week. We're through it. We're through it. I'm seeing this here now. This was the congestion, and we worked through it in the gap that happened on Friday. And this market is so strong. So we'll see where we go next. In fact, let's just see where we do go next. Next target is obviously 106.25, but actually after that, just saying here. Just saying 
exactly where we can go in here. I think I think we're gonna get through this quickly. We we the next target is here, 106.25, which will blow through. Then the next target is basically 108-ish. But I I this was what I thought we'd rally up to before the end of 2014, and we didn't. We stopped at 106.25. I saw where that was. Here, all right. We're we're not that far away from this, so I think we get up on over this when we get here. Could we retest that and knock it over immediately? Yes. But I actually think now with the drift off we've had here since the beginning of the year, when the power action comes back in and the buying starts aggressively in here, I think we lift through 108. But I will say 108 is the next target then over the high. 107.75-ish, 107.60, 108. So... I think we actually could run right over that though. When buying comes into something like the market, which is already in an uptrend to begin with, it can go anywhere at once, okay? It's like there's no stopping it basically. This is why someone brought up in the room the other day about counter trend trading, that that's what people are doing with this market. It's just if you want to be a professional trader, which I'm teaching people to do, and if you want to make a lot of money in the market, the only way to, to think is like a professional, then you don't counter trend trade anything. Because in doing that, you're actually, you're guessing that something is going to change trend before it actually does it. So there's two things that people do when, they, when they're taking trades like this market where they're shorting it. They're counter trend trading knowing the market is bullish and they're still shorting it anyways because they want some kind of momentum move and they feel like the best chance for them to get it is to short because they've already missed the rally and that they feel like the only way they can make money is shorting it. So that's one thing people do. Knowing the market's bullish, they purposely counter trend trade it because they feel like the momentum won't go continue higher. They missed it. They didn't get the long and they got to get all the only way they can get momentum or get any play or any make any money is to go against the trend. So they're guessing that this is the top and they're counter trend trading just to get play in something. Doesn't have a high odds of working. They don't care. They missed the bullish move up. Many people did miss the bullish move in 2014 because I thought the market was extended in 2013. It wasn't. The other thing people do, though, also is actually think that the market has broken trend here because of the series of lower highs and lower lows. Lower highs and lower lows. Another lower high and another lower low. And as a result of that, people actually think the market's broken and in a downtrend. And they short in their mind. They think it's a valid trade, a valid entry to short. They think this has broken the trend, and it's now in a downtrend, but it's not. So people take a short, which they think is valid, and they have conviction in it. It's the wrong thing to do. Actually, those people are the worst of, of the best of the two, of the worst of the two, because they actually think they're doing something right. Whereas counter-trend trading people actually know that they're trading against the trend and do it anyways, and guessing that something's reached a top or a bottom. In the case of the market, or people that are shorting the market think it's reached a top but it has not. So getting back to what I was saying, if you want to make a lot of money in the market, you have to think and act like a professional, in which case you do trades and take trades that have a high odds of working, which means that you take trades in the side of who's in control. Who's in control? And uh, granted, sometimes it's hard for people to see because you see five, six days red down, drop down to the market. And, and if you don't know how to read gaps the way that I do, which is how I read the chart, then you may think that the bears are in control or the shorts, but this is nothing really weak. So I get how that's difficult sometimes for people to understand, but the fact is the market is still bullish, was still bullish, even with the fall off in there. Nothing goes in a straight line, even if it's bullish all the way up straight to the sky anyway. Same thing with shorts, okay? So things move and wiggle and jiggle, and this is what makes the market. It's all what makes the market. People are what makes the market, actually. 
And so there's people in here that have shorted this market. Some of them have gotten out, some of them not. But I see here now today after Friday's trading that we're through the congestion. This market will make a new high this week. I don't know what we do tomorrow morning, but it almost doesn't even matter. There's a high percentage of chance that the market will make a new high this week. And 108 is a number that we could haul into and pull back again. But I don't even think that's likely. I think we get through that because we've been back and forth, back and forth here for a month. And I think once this starts to get going, it makes a new high over 106.25. In the QQQs, the market's going to feel like running. The market's going to feel like running in, Feb in fact, I'm just seeing in February. I'm just seeing this right now. February is going to be a crazy bullish month. And actually, last year, I think it was very, very bearish. Let me just go back. See, again, this has nothing to do with timing of the year or cyclical things or anything. And I know people look at that stuff, but it has nothing to do with anything. I'm seeing it right now. February is going to be so crazy bullish. Let me just look here. Actually, no, we did rally in February last year. In February of 2014, we did rally. Let's look at uh, the third, 2013. Maybe it was 2013. One of those February months, we had. I know we had the bearishness. It was two years ago. Yeah, it was in here. Market had a lot of bearish days in here in this month here of 2013. That's what I was remembering. And it might have even been 2012. See, again, it really has nothing to do with the time of the year. <laughs> I know people think it does, but it doesn't. Because you got to read what's going on in the live time right now, right now, right now, right now. And things change. They do change. Nothing stays the same forever. You no, know, it was 2013. 2013 was the timing of that where there was more bearishness. Anyways, February is going to be a bullish month. So there you have it. I'm seeing it. One more week left in January, and I'm not saying that this can't be the start of, of it this week because we are very likely going to make a new high in the market this week. If we don't, we will next week, the following week after that, which is the beginning of February. So February is going to be an extraordinarily bullish month in the market. Timing is great early in the year to lift on through and continue higher up on through the numbers, through 108 up to 110 and wherever the market wants to fly. So shorts will cover in here up over the high and the next level and the next level, but they're not going to give up on the market because the market will have a big run again, wherever it goes, and then people will short it again saying that's the top again, and then it won't be, and then on and on and on and on and on. And then people will take profits out and they'll say, oh, this is it, this has got to be the top, this has got to be the top, <laughs> and it won't be because the market's going to run all of 2015. This was the call I made in December when I saw it. Well, I actually saw it before that, but I really saw the numbers really saw 150 in the QQQs for 2015 and possibly, I mean, this is a dream, dream target of 175. 150 is a realistic target for the QQQs this year. That's, you know, 46 points away from here. But uh, 175 is the dream target for the QQQs this year. And I'm not saying that's out of the woods because the SPY is really going to rock and roll. Unbelievably. All right. So this is Melissa with the StockSwoosh.com. Have a great week, everyone. If you'd like more information or want to sign up for the next Golden Gap class, email me. It is going to be February 7th and 8th. I just set the dates this weekend for the next class. If you would like to sign up for it, you can pre-register. It's in the middle of earnings season. It's a great time to learn. If you'd like more information, email me at Melissa at the StockSwoosh.com. Beautiful bullish market. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And again, many, many people have been sending me emails the last month. I think I actually didn't respond to any of them except for the people that I knew uh, that trade with me that are asking about the market, um, who kept saying the market's lower, lower, lower. And I kept saying, no, 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 no. And then some people were just like, are you sure the market's higher, Melissa? And I said, yes. So I think those people that have done my class already know by now you can look at this here and you read the gaps. And that's what I do. And it's a very, very unique, specific thing that is really so great. It's just so terrific. And that's how I know where the market's going. Email me at melissa at thestockswitch.com if you'd like more information. Have a great night, everyone.